Oh, yeah. mm. Mm. All right. uh, Mr. Robinson, again, Joel Cooper with State Attorney's Office. Um, here to take a sworn statement from you. If you would, please raise your right hand. Mr. Robinson, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right. And you can put your hand down. Um, you understand that um, the oath you just took is just like taking an oath in court, and that if you lie in a material way, that is a felony. It's called perjury, punishable by up to five years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, today, Mr. Robinson, are you under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medications that would affect your ability to tell the truth? No, sir. Any physical or emotional conditions that would affect your ability to tell the truth? No, sir. Okay. Has anybody forced you or threatened you in any way to give a, a statement here today? No, sir. And you also understand, um, giving these statements under oath, um, freely and voluntarily, that they could be used against you in your case. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you need any more time to um, discuss anything with your attorney, Mr. Rockwell, who's also present? No, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Robinson, do you have a nickname? Yes. And what is your nickname? Blue. Do some people also refer to you as Big Dog? Yes, sir. Now, in your case um, that you have pending um, involving myself, um, 20 CF 8261, there are multiple other individuals, co-defendants, that are also pending involving that matter. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that includes one of your sons, Abdul Robinson, Jr.? Yes, sir. And um, what do you call him? Kareem. K-A-R-I-M? Yes, sir. And that's his middle name? Yes, sir. Does he also have other nicknames? Oh, uh, yeah. Do people sometimes refer to him as Little Blue? Yes. Do they sometimes refer to him as Crazy or K Crazy? Yeah, Crazy K. Crazy K. Okay. Um, Hakeem Robinson is also your son. Yes, sir. And a co-defendant in your case. Correct? Yes, sir. And does he have a nickname? Oh. What do you call Hakeem Robinson? Oh, Kim. Do all other people also call him Queso? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Leroy Whitaker is another co-defendant. Yes, sir. What is his nickname? Scott. Okay. And finally, we have Dominique Barner, who is another co-defendant. What is his nickname? Butter. Um, how long have you known Dominique Barner? Uh, I've been knowing him like, I knew his father. I knew, I've been kind of knowing him like all his life. Most of his life? Yes. Did your family also know Butter? And uh, what I mean by that is Hakeem Robinson knows Dominique. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He knows Dominique Barner. Yes, sir. Um, does Little Blue Abdul Robinson Jr. know Barter? Yes, sir. And does uh, Scotty Leroy Whitaker know Barter? Yes, sir. Okay. And do Hakeem Robinson, um, Scotty, and Lee, I'm sorry, Dominique Barner, Butter all hang out together? Yes, sir. Now, going back to January 2020, was your phone number 904-866-2370? Yes, sir. Now, the subscriber information for that account came back to a Daryl Watts. Do you know Daryl Watts? Yes, sir. Who is Daryl Watts to you? A uh, friend of mine, a close friend of mine. Okay. Is he actually deceased? Yes, sir. And did he die in uh, end of 2019, approximately? Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, why were you using Daryl Watts' name as the subscriber account name for a phone that you were using? Well, I was... Uh, we went and got the phone together. I was a subscriber, a uh, uh, user subscriber with the phone. Like an authorized user? Authorized user, yeah. Okay. And so was it common for you to have a phone with Daryl Watts as a subscriber name on the account? Yes, sir. Um, would it also be common if another member of your family had a phone that the account information said Daryl Watts? Yes, sir. Now, prior to Abdul Robinson Jr.'s arrest in this case, did he commonly use multiple cell phones? Yes, sir. In January of 2020, did um, Abdul Robinson Jr. use two specific numbers? I'm going to reference one that I think you've seen before as part of your discovery, but 904-624-3684. Yes, sir. You recognize that as one of his numbers? Yes, sir. An area code 478-491-2831. Do you recognize that number? Yes, sir. And is that a phone number that Abdul Robinson Jr. also used? Yes, sir. Now, prior to um, Hakeem Robinson's arrest, did he also use multiple cell phones? Yes, sir. And was it common for you to speak to Hakeem Robinson over the phone? Yeah. Okay. And so in January of 2020, was Hakeem Robinson using phone number 904-704-1595? Yes, sir. And did he also use phone number area code 478-305-9583? Yes, sir. In January of 2020, was Leroy Whitaker's phone number, area code 904-803-3671? Yes, sir. 
And again, you communicated with all of these individuals over the phone. Yes, sir. Who is... Did he want to find out who was responsible? Yes, sir. And was that, in fact, something that, as a family, Hakeem Robinson, Abdul Robinson Jr., that y'all discussed, trying to figure out who was responsible? Yes, sir. Was Leroy Whitaker close to? Not really. What about Dominique Barner? I don't think he was close to him. He knew him, though. Okay. But Hakeem Robinson and your other son, Abdul Robinson Jr., were closer to no. Whitaker. Now, Today, you're obviously familiar with the person. Yes, sir. Okay. As it relates to your case? Yes, sir. And his nickname? Yes. Okay. Now, he was shot and killed on January 15th of 2020 at a shopping center on Merrill Road. Are you aware of a song put out prior to him being shot and killed in yes. January 2020? Yes, sir. And what was your understanding of what that song was about? It was a, it was a dead song about. So you said a diss song? Yes. Yeah. So it was um Talking bad about Talking bad I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Talking bad about Who brought that song to your attention? Oh, really social media. Okay. Did Hakeem Robinson know about the song? Yes, sir. Did he ever talk to you about the song? Yeah. Okay. And how did he feel about the song? He didn't like it. What about Abdul Robinson Jr.? Did he ever mention the song to you? Yes, sir. How did he feel about it? He didn't like it either. Now, going again back to January 15th of 2020, that day, were you called by Abdul Robinson Jr., your son? Yes, sir. And was that from a number that you recognized as belonging to him? Yes, sir. What did he want? Uh, he wanted me to go um, pick up um, Scotty. Okay. And I know it's hard to just if you can keep your voice up for me, but um, you said Abdul Robinson Jr. wanted you to go pick up Scotty. Yes. Leroy Whitaker. Yes. Sorry. Did you also get phone calls from Leroy Whitaker? Yes, sir. And what did he want? Uh, tell me uh, where he was at to come pick him up. Did he tell you if he was alone or did he have anybody with him? No, he said him and Barter was together. So Leroy Whitaker and Dominique Barner. Oh, he was next to a crash car. 
did that car crash? Was it on the street or in a yard? Do you remember? It looked like it was kind of like in a ditch or a yard. Yeah, it looked like it might have been in a ditch or something. So was that near a house? Yes. Like in the front yard of a house? Yes. And you drove past that. They, and both of them had on pajamas. Yep. Yep. Do you remember anything specific about either one of them? Uh, yes, yeah, with some Mountain Dew pajamas. Okay. Today, do you remember which one had that on? I think it was Dominique. Dominique Barner? I think so. Did they have anything in their hands as they came out of the house? Yeah, they had some old clothes in their hand. Both of them? Yes, yeah, sir. Immediately concerned for anybody else. Yes, sir. And who was that? Uh, uh, Hakeem. And that's Hakeem Robinson. Yes, sir. And why were you concerned for Hakeem Robinson? So I know that's they that's their little friend circles, okay. and he wasn't there. It was just them. And so, is it common for Hakeem Robinson, Leroy Whitaker, and Dominic Barner to hang out together? Yes, sir. Okay. And so, when he wasn't there, you were concerned for what might be going on with with Hakeem Robinson. Yes, sir. Did you express your concern to Leroy Whitaker and Dominic Barner? Yes, I kept asking like, oh, wait, 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 where uh, Hakeem at? Where Hakeem? Where, where, where Hakeem at? I kept asking like, where Hakeem at? And that's when they finally told me he jumped out the car and ran another way. Okay. And I'm going to ask you just to be careful with your hands and mouth just because of the recording. Um, who told you that? Um, did both Leroy Whitaker and Dominic Barner talk to you about the car that crashed? Yes. Okay. And what did, you mentioned just a moment ago that they said Hakeem Robinson got out of the car. Yes, sir. Tell me specifically what um, did Dominic Barner say that to you as well. Both of them said it. Okay. What do you specifically remember them saying? That they they crashed the car. The police chasing them. And came and jumped out the car. They went one way. He went another way. Did they say whether or not Hakeem Robinson, Kimi, had anything with him when he jumped out of the car? Yeah, they say he had a gun with him. Did um, Leroy Whitaker and Dominic Barner um, mention to you if anything had been left behind in the car after it crashed? Yep, they said he left a gun in the car behind. Okay. And did Leroy Whitaker and Dominic Barner tell you anything about what may have transpired or was going to transpire before the crash? Before the crash? Yeah, that, let me rephrase that. Before the car crashed, did Dominic Barner and Leroy Whitaker say anything about what someone in the car maybe was going to do as they fled from the police? Oh, yeah, shoot at the police. And who was going to specifically be the one shooting? King. And hearing all of that information, were you still concerned for? Yeah. For yeah, I was very people? much concerned. In addition to that information, um, did you learn about being shot and killed? Yes, sir. And who told you that? Uh, Scott explained to me that it was a guy that got shot. Um, it was a little while back before this situation at a, at a gas station that made the song. So Leroy Whitaker was explaining to you it was a person that had been shot once before? Yes, sir. And who shot him the time before? Uh, he did. Scotty? Scotty. 
and the reason was because of a song that he put out? Yes, sir. And so when he told you that information, were you aware of who this person was? Yes, sir. Having gathered all of that information, And what questions or statements, communication, I guess, did you have with Leroy Whitaker and Dominic Warner about where Hakeem Robinson was located? Where he was located? Yeah. At? Oh, I, I asked him where he was at. I kept, you know, pressing where he was at, and that's when they told me that um the young lady had picked him up. Who told you that? Um, um, uh, Scott Wood, Leroy Whitaker. Okay. And what lady are you referring to? Um. It was your understanding from Scotty that he picked Hakeem Robinson up. Yes, sir. Now, within a couple days of the murder, did you see anything on social media posted by your son, Hakeem Robinson, that concerned you? Yes, sir. And what was that specifically? Oh, it was a, uh, they call it a story. It's on the story saying that kill a nigga and get his toes done. And was that depicting Hakeem Robinson? So what? Did that, you said it was on the story. Was that like Instagram story? Yeah, Instagram story. And was that something that put, was posted by Hakeem Robinson? Yes, sir. When you saw that, were you upset? Yes, sir. Did you try and reach out and speak to Hakeem Robinson? Yes, sir. And when you spoke to him, what did you tell him? I told him he need to take that shit down. Did he deny being involved when you told him to take that down? No. Now, as part of the discovery in this case, you've had an opportunity with your attorney to watch what I'll refer to as a dash cam video, a video that actually recorded the murder of Charles McCormick. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you've watched that? Yes, sir. Now, when you watched that video, you could see, could you see what the shooter was wearing? Yes, sir. Could you see how the shooter ran? Yes, sir. How the shooter moved? Yes, sir. Did you also see the firearm that was used? Yes, sir. Right. Now, when you watched that video of the murder of Charles McCormick, did you recognize the shooter? Yes, sir. Who was the shooter in that video? Hakeem Robinson. Your son, Hakeem Robinson? Yes, sir. Right. Um, and obviously he's your son, so you're very familiar with him? Yes, sir. Um, you're familiar with his height and his build? Yes, sir. You're familiar with how he walks and runs? Yes, sir. You've seen him move in music videos? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did he have dreads back in 2020, January of 2020? Yes, sir. Right. Um, have you ever seen him wear hoodies? Yes, sir. Is that common for him to wear? Yes, sir. Have you ever seen him wear the hoodie with it pulled up over his dreads? Yes, sir. And did that look similar to what was captured in the dash cam video of the murder? Yes, sir. And again, as Hakeem Robinson's father, when you look at that video, to you, that is Hakeem Robinson? Yes, sir. When you watched that video, um, was there anything about the clothing that also stood out? No, it was the shoes, though. And what was familiar about the shoes? I had not seen um, the gray and white joints before. On who? On Hakeem. Okay, so you, 
you've seen Hakeem Robinson with shoes that appeared to you to be the same as what the shooter was wearing. Yes, sir. Anything about the firearm look familiar to you? Uh, yeah, it looked like I seen on the video before. You believe you've seen that firearm on what? A video. Okay. What kind of video? Music video. Um, do you remember the name of the music video? Uh, bang it out. Now, when that music video was recorded, were you actually present? Yes, sir. Um, and was Hakeem Robinson in that video? Yes, sir. Did Hakeem Robinson in that video, was he holding um, two different firearms? Yes, sir. All right. Do you recall what one of the firearms was? Uh, Draco. All right. And then the second firearm, was that the fi was? Could you describe it? What color was it? Black. Okay. Short. Okay. And is that the firearm, the black short firearm in that video that you believe to be the same or similar firearm that you saw in the dash cam video of the murder? Yes, sir. Right. Now, since you were present for the filming of the banging out videos, were the two firearms, the Draco and the short black firearm Hakeem Robinson had, were they real firearms? Yes, sir. And did Hakeem Robinson have that short black firearm that was depicted in the video prior to the death of Charles McCormick? Yes, sir. After Charles McCormick was shot and killed, did you ever see Hakeem Robinson with that firearm, that short black firearm again? No, sir. Did you still see him with the Draco? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, during this case, Abdul Robinson Jr., um, he was arrested last, correct? Yes, sir. Prior to him getting arrested, did was he aware that there was an arrest warrant outstanding for him? Yes, sir. Okay. And once he was aware of that, did he flee Florida and go to another state? Yes, sir. And he was trying to hide from law enforcement? Yes, sir. Do you also know a person? And so has he ever been to your house in Brown Jersey Court before? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, that's all the questions I got, Mr. Robinson. Thank you.